So now we're going to look at installing some modules so that we can um, start using authentication. And we're going to need two things for this. The first thing we need is something to create cookies or session storage so that we can store some information on the browser about who's logged in. That's where we'll be using Express Session. And the next thing we need is a module called Passport and that will allow us to do the authentication and checking the details and registering users and stuff like that. So there are two components that we need to install. So the first thing I, I want to show you is Express Session. And this is the module that will be used to create local storage or cookies. So you just want to uh, install it using npm install. And we just wait for that to install. And I'm just going to require it here. And this essentially gives us a method. And I just want to call this method session. So I'm just going to say let session equals require and then express um, session like this. So what I'm going to do is first thing we need to do is set up the session by calling the session method. And we want to make sure that this session is available for all routes. So the way we can do that is we can say app.use and then um, inside it we can give a middleware function which is called session. And we need to give it an object of options here. And there's a few th things that we need to set. The first thing that we need to set is a secret. And the secret is basically a key that's used to um, hash um, our cookies. So uh, I'm not going to explain what hashing is, but there's a lot of great tutorials on YouTube. But it basically, um, this secret key gets put in with our, the data in our cookie to form this unique string. And it's a non-reversible function. And if any of the properties of that cookie changes, this generated string will be completely different. And the reason we want uh, to do this to our cookie is because um, they store important information like um, sign-in details, for example. And we don't want the user to be able to change their cookie. So we don't want the user to, for example, say that there's someone else and then be able to use that cookie to sign into someone else's account. So we need to hash our cookies to verify that they're okay. And that's probably more theory than you need to know. So we want to just set this secret here. And I'm just going to set this to a string now, just like this. But realistically, you would not expose this in your code like this. You'd put it as an environment variable. But I'm just not going to bother today. Um, two other things that we need to set. We need to set this property called resave. Um, and what resave does is it makes sure that... Um, it saves the session storage each time you run this route, regardless of whether it was modified or not. I'm not sure why we need this, um, but free code cam want us to set it to true, so it might be for testing or something. So we just want to set resave to true here. And the final thing that we uh, need to set is this property called save uninitialized. So let's have a look at what that is. So what it does is it basically allows the session object, I guess, to be created even if it's not got any meaningful data in it. I'm really not too sure about this one, but um, just know that we need to set that to true as well. So now we can use the session storage for all our routes, and we have this configuration right here. Again, we could have given this as a separate function and provided a variable here as well. So let's have a look at the session. So what this session does is for any request that you run, so such as this one, for example, it will create a field called session in the request and it will give us access to our session. And we can save information to it and read information from it. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to say console.log and I'm just going to log the session. So I'll say request.session here. Okay, so let's start the server. And um, if I go to localhost 3000 and I refresh this, uh, we can see that we have this session object right here. And what we can do is write to the session object and then once again use request.session to read from it as well. So what I'm just going to store for now, just to demonstrate this, is I'm just going to store a number that shows the number of times that this um, route has been accessed, for example. So what I can say is whenever this uh, route gets run, I can in increment the request.session. So I can say request.session plus plus like this. And then we'll just look at the session straight after. So if I run this now and I refresh this page, we can see that it comes up as not a number, and that's that's okay. Um, actually, you know what? I I should probably set this to a variable called count or something. I'm sorry. Um. So we'll see what this does in a second. So what this does is it creates a variable in session called count or increments it if it 
that if it already exists and as you can see it's currently not a number but if I refresh this page once this becomes one if I refresh it again it becomes two so let's keep refreshing it for a bit and we the count is now at eight so and and if we look here we can also see that we have a cookie right here and it, Obviously, it's in a format that we shouldn't be able to read and modify, although it's not completely safe, like I said before. Um, so this is stored specifically on Chrome, and it's exclusive to Chrome. So if I were to do the same thing on Firefox, and um, I refresh this page, um, we can see that the count is back and not a number. And then if I refresh it once and twice, we can see that count right here is at two. And this count right here, because the request is coming from Firefox, it's Firefox's count, not Chrome's. And if I refresh this again, the request is coming from Chrome, and we can see Chrome's count comes in here. If I refresh this, it's coming from Firefox, and Firefox's counts come in. So these sessions are completely um, independent to each browser. So that's how we know that they're unique, because the counts are different. Okay, by the way, um, these cookies won't be saved when we disconnect the connection because both Chrome and Firefox don't allow local hosts to store cookies. But this won't be the case when we're um, actually deploying our application. So the next thing uh, we need to use is something called Passport. And Passport basically has a bunch of methods that allow us to um, register users as well as you know checking login details and stuff like that. And the package name for Passport is, oops, that's supposed to be passport, not password, passport like this. And we have to install that as well. So I'm just gonna do npm install passport. And that will go ahead and fetch that. And I'm also gonna just require it here. So after session, I'm just gonna say let um, passport equals require passport, right. So for Passport, um, when we want to allow Passport to be used on root, so we need to do two things. So the first thing we need to do is call a method called initialize, and that gets Passport ready to use, and it does some basic configuration. And we want to use, mount this again for all routes. And remember that um, with method training, you can put multiple methods together like this. So after this, I can say Passport.initialize. So this just basically gets it ready. And we need to also call another method on passport, and that's passport.session. And what this basically does, I think, is it basically says that, oh, we have this session right here, and you can um, write data to it and read the data from it. So it's basically telling passport that we can use um, express sessions, like object, I guess, to store the um, session data, I guess. So that's the two things that we need to do. And after we have both of those ready, we have everything set up and our passport can now um, create users and then write a session ID to our cookies and then we can use that to detect if we're signed in or not. So that's what we need to do in our project basically. Um, by the way, the glitch terminal is not working, um, which I'm not surprised because glitch is genuinely terrible for reliability and it, it will just say fail to load terminal. But you can still use this um, add package here and then search for the package. And I've just added express session and I've added passport in like this. So the next thing to do is in server.js, we need to require this. So um, after we've... Um, require after we've let's just do it down here after that after our pug so we can say um let a session equals require and as you can see here it says fail to start terminal right here like i said um and we want to say this is express session and we also want to require passport so we want to say let passport equals require passport like this then we want to mount this onto app.use, so um, we can just copy this code right here, it doesn't really matter. It's basically the same thing that I did here. So we want to mount the session um, with the object showing the options right here. And instead of the secret just being um, just a key, like, uh, sorry, just being a string, what I've done is I've just um, created an environment variable and I've stored it as session underscore secret, um, just so it's a bit more secure. Um, we also need to mount the express middlewares on, and remember the two express middlewares are passport.initialize and passport.session. So we have to mount those as well, and I'm just going to chain them to here. So we want to say passport.initialize. I think this is how you say it. It's the American spelling, not the English one. And I'm just going to also just, I'm going to start copying these because I know I'm bad with um, spellings. 
So we want to do that as well. And that should be everything that we need to do, I think. So we have passport ready and it's a, it's ready to use the session right here. So I've just realized something actually that um, you can't actually train your um, um, passport methods into the first app.use because I just looked at the source code really quick and it, it actually checks that you've done each line of um, code individually. So it should look exactly like this. So you should use the session here and then the passport and then the next passport method. And you have to do it like this if you want it to pass. And after you've done those things, um, you can go ahead and submit this and you'll see that it passes. Um, yeah, sorry, my bad. I didn't realize you couldn't train it before, but if you put them separately like this, it should pass.